what we want to do now is create our script. So make a new folder called script scripts and a new folder in that called UI and right click create C sharp scripts um, and name the C sharp script to main main menu open it uh, open it up Now, because we're dealing with UI, underneath using Unity Engine on the first line, type below it using Unity Engine dot UI. So we we ensure that we can access stuff such as buttons and sliders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The variables we will need to make. Well, first off, um, public, yeah, public game object, and that's the current window. make three variables one for each of your sliders so public slider and this is going to be called quality slider public make that bigger for you um, collapse solution explorer and properties public slider vsync slider and public slide slider anti aliasing so aa slider make three text variables um, for quality text public text vsync text public text AA text and make another variable for the toggle um, and because I can't be bothered to write anisotropic filter for any anisotropic filtering I'm just gonna say AF toggle Now, what we want to do is find the first, well, find the first button on the screen and make that active, which enables joypads and gamepads, etc., such as the Xbox One controller, um, to work coherently and nicely with your UI system. So, what we want to do is in the start function, um, go to write game object capital G game object dot find object of type button parentheses dot select so make sure it's selected make sure the first button selected um, set the quality setting slider max value so quality uh, quality sets qual quality slider dot max value equal to quality settings dot uh, names dot length because names is an array of quality setting names and just stick a minus one at the end because it starts at index zero. Um, so when you load up the settings panel, you want to make sure that what you see is the currently applied settings to the game. So what you want to do is set the quality settings quality slider dot value um, is equal to quality settings get quality level 
Um, and do the same thing for anti-aliasing. So AA slider dot value is equal to quality settings dot anti-aliasing. And the same for vsync. vsync slider dot value is equal to quality settings dot vsync count. And for now, that'll do. I like to keep things nice and simple and group them into regions. So I'm going to create a new region called. And to create a new region, just do hashtag region followed by the region name. So the region name can, is going to be basic functions. And be sure to end your region and region like so in this region we're going to have a start game function so public void start game requires an int level public void quit game Inside it, you just want to check if it's a web player. So if application dot is web player to make sure it's not to check if it's false, just add an exclamation mark for application. And so two ampersands, uh, it's not application dot is editor. So instead of and, that should be an or. So an or is shift and then the button next to Z on the left hand side. Um, is editor and then in the if statement just do application dot quit. <laughs> we want another public Void switch with switch window. And I want a game object new window. Wrong brackets. Current window dot set active false. The current window is equal to the new window. And just check. Current window dot set active to true. And then just do the same thing again up here. Game object of find object of type button dot select to check if there is an existing button. Um, so that's fine for the moment. We'll be going back to that. So create a new region. Called settings. Um. And we'll be wanting to set each of the quality settings and alter the name. So new function public void quality settings zoom 
Okay. So. Um, oh, wow, that shouldn't be there. And get your parentheses there. And we also forgot to end region. Um, huh, why are you throwing up errors uh, in the start function? Quality oh, slider dot max value is equal to quality settings dot names dot length minus one. Oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> the reason why it's throwing up errors is because our function is actually called quality settings, which it shouldn't be called. Instead, that should be set quality. And we can remove that from the top. So in the set quality function, we want to set a new setting based on the current slider value. So, quality, I can spell quality settings dot set quality level and we want to explicitly cast it as an int um, the value of the quality slider. And now we want to update the text to represent the currently selected quality setting. So if you go quality, uh, qual the quality text dot text um, is equal to, and then in double quotes, current quality level colon and the space and then we want to append to the string the current the name of the current quality level so quality settings dot names uh, square bracket quality settings dot get quality level and basically what this bit here what this bit does is it will append to that string just there, the current name of the quality level which it gets there. Now we want to set the other uh, settings to match the new quality setting. So for the anti-aliasing slider, aa slider dot value is equal to quality settings dot anti-aliasing. Um, and vsync slider dot value is equal to quality settings dot vsync count um, now I want we need to check if the any so filtering is on so we have to create a new function, uh, which will return a bool. So public bool is an ESO filtering on. So 
if quality settings dot anisotropic filtering is equal to anisotropic filtering dot enable or quality settings dot anisotropic filtering is equal to anisotropic filtering dot force enable return true otherwise else return false um, yeah so basically that checks if it's on in the quality settings so the only reason why you created a separate function is because it can either be enabled or force enabled but we don't really care about whether it's enabled or force enabled we just want to know if it's on or off um, so in the if we head quickly back to the start function we want to set the anisotropic filter um, the anisotropic toggle button so what we do is because we want to set this button here what we do is if is AF on like so so basically we call the function and if it returns true it'll execute this if statement so just set aniso filter toggle um, dot is on to true else af toggle dot is on equals false uh, so that just finishes that one um, Okay, and uh, the back of the set quality. Mm. The other if statement. If is AF on. AF dot is on. I could have just copied and pasted this from above, which you can do uh, now that I've told you, rather than me now just typing AF toggle. Dot is on equals false. And now we have to do the same for vsync and anti-aliasing. So, public void vsync. Now we want to set the vsync based on the current slider value. So, quality. Uh, um, do we? Yes, we do. Quality settings dot vsync count is equal to now we want to explicitly cast as an int because it will only set ints and sliders defaulters uh, floats uh, vsync slider dot value now we're going to use a switch statement and we're going to switch on quality settings dot vsync count and basically, it's just a more complicated if statement. Um, so what, what we have here is a case uh, zero. And so basically, if the vsync value is zero, then show that then we want to show that the vsync text to be vsync off such so. That will be vsync text dot text is equal to vsync v sync off and break so then we go out of the switch statement otherwise it'll default to so basically if the vsync is one or two um, vsync text dot text is equal to v sync plus quality settings dot v sync count dot to string so then it converts the int to a string and of course break 
and that's vsync. Um, now we want to actually call the vsync function in the set quality function um, just after the slider value. Um, just then it's, it uh, also sets the text of the vsync more than anything. Um, and now we want to do the anti-aliasing. So underneath vsync public void AA for anti-aliasing. Um, and we want to show the correct text to apply valid AA values with the slider value. So switch and I'm going to cast as an int. Um, AA slider dot value case zero break uh, okay and in case zero we want to do AA text dot text is equal to anti aliasing And then quality settings dot anti aliasing is equal to zero. And we want to repeat that case statement three to three more times. Oh, so uh, control Z. Copy once, twice, thrice. Move the break to be in line. Let's change the first one to one, second to two, and case zero to three. And instead of saying off, we want to say times two, otherwise times four, otherwise times eight. And set the anti-aliasing value here to just two, here to four, and here to eight. This is more of a Unity thing than anything else, which makes things incredibly awkward. Um, but that's the way it has to be done. Which is, I know, is a really horrible explanation, but it'll have to suffice for now. And as we did for vsync, we want to do the same thing for anti-aliasing. So in the set quality, just below AA slider dot value, so just below line 68 on mine, um, just do AA, just call AA which will call that function. And we want one more, and that's the toggle function for the anisotropic filtering button, uh, toggle checkbox thing. Uh, so public void toggle AF if AF dot is on. Quality settings dot anisotropic filtering is equal to anisotropic filtering dot enable. Simple as. Otherwise, so else, do the exact same thing. So select a copy, paste, but instead of dot enable, write dot disable. And just call toggle AF in. Just, uh, no, yes, no, no, that's fine. Save. Checking the basic functions. Ah, we are missing one thing. And that is, um, well, loading level. So underneath switch window. That was a bit random. Um, underneath switch window, uh, we want to write uh, I enumerator. So I enumerator. Um, because we're going to load the level in the background so it doesn't hang the current scene. So it's a bit it's a bit smoother. And we can apply transitions and everything later on. So I, I enumerator load new level int L for the levels index async operation async and this you can just find on the unity wiki 
it was a pro only feature in Unity 4, but as of Unity 5, um, and anyone can use it, which is really nice. Load level async, and then pass in L. Then when it's finished loading, return it. Return that level, so return async. Which will just then jump it to that loaded level, and then unload the assets of your previous level, which is the main menu level. Um, so in start game, just do uh, start coroutine, load new level, and pass in level. Save. Uh, add a private bool. So private bool is loading level. So it doesn't call the async operations multiple times. Change that to false. Copy. Um, so if exclamation mark foot is not loading level, then load the level. And here at the start of the load level enumerator, just set is loading level to true. And at the bottom, just set is loading level to false. So if we jump back into Unity, select the canvas, call that main menu canvas, drag in the main menu script onto the can onto that canvas, and we have to set the current window to the main panel, expand settings. Set the quality slider to overall quality slider. VSync slider to VSync slider. It's pretty self explanatory. And AA slider to anti aliasing slider, which I have labeled Bad Freddy. Um, but it is that one. And I also haven't set its anchor points either. So just make sure that your anchor points and your labels match. Anti aliasing slider. Anti aliasing text. Okay, so jump back into uh, jump back into the canvas, drag in anti aliasing slider, then drag in the text elements. Quality, VSync, anti aliasing, then drag in the toggle, so anisotropic filtering. And that is that bit done. Um, now, what I want to do is give it a little more functionality. So, if we select the overall quality slider, where it says on value change single, it says list empty, click the plus, drag in the main menu canvas, and select. In the note where it says no function, go to main menu, and then select uh, set quality. Where it, click on VSync slider, on value changed, click the plus, drag in the main menu canvas, where it's instead of no function, select main menu, and select VSync. And the anti-aliasing slider, on value changed, click the plus, Drag in the main menu canvas, and instead of no function, go to main menu, and AA for anti-aliasing. Click on anisotropic filtering. On value change, click the plus. Drag in the main menu canvas, and instead of no function, main menu, and it should be anisotropic filtering, AF. Um, What did I said, what was it? Uh, uh, settings. Um, toggle AF is what I'm looking for. Uh, toggle AF. Okay, so the settings are linked up. Click your on the back button where it says on click, 
click the plus, uh, drag in the canvas, instead of no function, go to main menu, and then select switch window to the main panel. Disable the settings panel by selecting the settings panel, unchecking the checkbox next to the name, go to the main, main, main panel and enable the main panel and click on the settings panel where it says on click, click the plus, drag in the canvas, instead of no function go to main, main menu, uh, switch window, drag in the settings panel, that's fine, click the quit button where it says on click, click the plus, drag in the main menu canvas and the no function, go to main menu and quit game. And the campaign, and, the, and then we'll link the other two buttons up when we start to make those game modes. Um, so if we jump back into OneNote, that is the UI graphics button and the UI settings. Um, so just check that it all works. So click play, um, and as you can see, it starts. It started off highlighting the quit button. Um, but if you want to change that, you just rearrange the hierarchy order up here. Um, so if we go on settings, uh, we can change the current quality level. And as you can see in the background, you can see how it changes. So fastest, fast, good, uh, beautiful, and fantastic. Uh, change the V-Sync level, change the anti-aliasing level, enable or disable anisotropic filtering. And of course, go back. And of course, as you can hopefully hear in the background, um, there is audio playing. And if you go into stats quickly, you can see the frame rate. And just to check the efficiency, if you go to Window, Profiler, and just dock the profiler with your audio mixer, um, you can see what's being rendered. Um, well, you can see what's being processed and what's causing the frame rate. So if we jump back into settings, I'm going to disable VSync. And as you can see, where I disabled VSync, it's significantly increased frame rate. Um, even on Fantastic with anti-aliasing turn, turned up to max. Um, yeah. That is a quick look into the main menu. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, and I shall see everyone in the second tutorial. Also, hopefully with the bug fix for when you move the mouse cursor, the menu actually tilts. Um, just going to pause that. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, queries, concerns, whatever, stick them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can and as best as I can. Um, and well, all of the source code for this is available through my website, which I'll link below. Um, but the only way you're going to actually properly learn it is by writing it out yourself rather than copy and pasting it. Um, also, the final result for this can also be seen on my portfolio on my website, which will be linked below. Um, so, I will see everyone in the next video. Thanks. Bye.